Hey there, Canaanites. As you may recall, back in September, I made a video giving a brief history and overview of the Halo Array. At the end, I said I would, if there was demand, make a follow-up diving into the technical details of a Halo. Well, there was demand, and I figured what a better way to celebrate this time of year than to give y'all what you want. Now, as we still know very little about the Senescent Array, that is, the original 12-ring array, this video will focus on the Neoteric Array, or the final 7-ring array that we're familiar with from the games. The rings we're familiar with are 10,000 kilometers in diameter, 318 kilometers wide, and 22.3 kilometers thick. For reference, the CSO Supercarrier, the biggest ship the Covenant has ever been known to build, is 29 kilometers long, just about 7 kilometers longer than a halo ring is thick. The underlying superstructure is composed of a super dense foundational material with scaffolding and cantilever structures laid on top to support various land masses, facilities, and tunnels that are strewn across and within the ring. The best look we've ever gotten at this was during Halo 3 on Installation 08. Here we could see the foundational metalwork that would be largely covered with artificial but natural looking environments. Fun fact, the end of Halo 3's Warthog run is basically around what would have become Installation 08's Silent Cartographer, or at least an island similar to the one on Installation 04. On a finished ring, entire sections of the ring, or small sections of the terrain, could be jettisoned if needed. We see this demonstrated in Halo CE along with, more recently, Halo Wars 2. Halos have a number of structures that service the needs of the ring or of a reclaimer or AI. The first of these, one central to just about everything else, is the Cartographer. The Cartographer contains a ring's map room, from which a user could find any number of other facilities along with real-time information on the ring's condition and any critical risks to the ring or its systems. During the Battle of Installation 04, the Silent Cartographer, the name given to that ring's Cartographer site, was used by the Covenant and the UNSC to locate two additional sites. The first of these was one of the ring's flood containment facilities. As most fans should know by now, the Halos were used for a variety of purposes beyond galactic genocide, and one of these was researching the Flood itself. On the rings and a variety of environments, the Forerunners studied the Flood, their tactics, their methods of infection, how they converted local environments, and more. Samples would also be stored in suspended animation for further study after the rings fired. Though a risk, the Forerunners knew that the entirety of the Flood might not be contained within the Milky Way. The samples of flood, ranging from tiny spores to infected forms to pure forms, would ensure continued study for better means of fighting the flood, be that by the constructs left behind by the Forerunners or whatever species might discover their work in the millennia after the firing. If there were ever an outbreak, a number of security measures could be put in place to prevent the flood's spread. The most basic of these involved implementing inclement weather conditions in the local environment. The frigid conditions would slow the spread of the parasite, or so it was hoped. Beyond that, the main containment and defense methods would fall to the Sentinels. Sentinel is a term applied to a number of Forerunner machines with a variety of jobs. The smallest of these are known as Constructors. As the name would imply, they repair damaged Forerunner structures and machines. The most abundant type of Sentinel seen on the rings are known as Aggressor Sentinels. Aggressors fill a number of roles including security, maintenance, and suppression of small-scale flood outbreaks. Two varieties of aggressors have been encountered thus far, the basic silver variant and a gold variant with a stronger blue sentinel beam. The latter has thus far only been encountered on Installation 05, why is unknown. It could be that they, like another sentinel type, are only deployed against larger flood outbreaks, or perhaps they were a unique variant to that installation. Delta Halo is noted to have had some fairly unique structures, so perhaps these gold sentinels were put in place as additional protection for these structures. As of the making of this video, we have yet to know. The next type of Sentinel is one we know to be only employed during large-scale outbreaks, the Enforcer. Equipped with forward shields, a more powerful Sentinel beam, large claw-like arms, pulse beams, and missiles, the Enforcer presents a formidable challenge against any it engages. In addition to the Sentinels, when the flood outbreak on Installation 05 grew large enough, it was contained within the Halo's library with a Sentinel wall. This large construct is exactly what it sounds like, a large wall erected to keep the flood in. Sentinels of various types guarded and maintained the wall along its length, and containment was further augmented by an enormous energy barrier, the containment shield, projected from pylons along the wall. And that brings us perfectly to the next major structure on the ring, the library. The library is at the very core of Halo's purpose in a number of ways. 
Within its walls is contained a wealth of information and knowledge along with the all-important activation index. Through numerous terminals and peripheral systems, an AI or reclaimer can access the library's archives, containing information that includes flood research, DNA sequencing from index species, and histories of the forerunners. At the center of the library is the activation index. After traversing several corridors and hallways, a reclaimer can reach the elevator that takes them to the index. Once claimed, the index is to be taken to the control room where it can be reunited with the core. Of note is the fact that the index is more than just the key to galactic genocide. When the index of Installation 03 was recovered by the UNSC, scientists began theorizing that it might have secondary and even tertiary functions. And in Halo Escalation, we saw another of its functions. When attempting to defeat the Didact, John 117 reunited the index with Installation 03's core in order to unlock certain security restrictions. This would allow another monitor, 859 Static Carillon, to jettison a section of the Halo Ring, something he would not otherwise be able to do. However, we all know the main function of a Halo. When the index is plugged into the control panel, Halo's weapon is activated. When fired, a Halo releases a burst of cross-phase, supermassive neutrinos. The burst possesses a harmonic frequency that disrupts and destroys the neural system of any life with even the most rudimentary notochord. To achieve its 25,000 light-year radius, the burst is amplified by three phase pulse generators. The signal is then fired deep into space at superluminal speeds, eventually propagating to near-infinite velocity. Essentially, this means that the effect is near-instantaneous once the ring fires. This resulted in two halos detecting pre-fire echoes when the array was being primed at the end of the Forerunner Flood War. Like most Forerunner installations, Halo is powered by vacuum energy, a sort of background energy that permeates the vacuum of space. When a ring is primed, vacuum energy is siphoned from local space-time to near depletion. Basically, you can't rapid-fire Halos. Interestingly, when I was at the Halo Array seminar at 343 back in September during PAX, 343 writer Jeremy Padanod, aka Vociferous, said that the composer was vital to the operation of a Halo. I sadly never got to follow up on exactly what this meant. We know that, like the Halos themselves, the composers use neural physics in its operation. As Halos can be tuned to specific targets, I can't help but wonder if the composer is vital in this capacity. Further, given what Jeremy said, if I'm interpreting it right, it would imply that every Halo ring has a composer. One day I really need to seek clarification or refutation on this. And that's a basic look at the anatomy of the Halos and how they work. I hope you enjoyed it and found it clear and informative. Thank you for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you.